All right, we're going to be staying a while longer on this subject. It's one of the developing stories for the day. On Skype now is Executive Director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Emmanuel Kutin, uh, to help us assess uh, exactly what happened in the wee hours of the VGM Awards, We are hours of today. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Kutin, for your time, and, and thank you very much. So what's your own analysis of what happened yesterday? Well, thank you for having me, and very good evening to your viewers. In fact, there are three things here, or if you like, four things. I think the security protocol at the event was not properly looked at. If you look at the public awareness we've been raising over the, few, uh, the past few days, reference possible terrorist attack in this country, and the gun licensing regime. I think licensing a gun is not just a matter of having money to buy a gun. You need to look at the psychological status of the person buying the gun, and oftentimes even some form of training on how to handle that weapon. The other aspect had to do with the uncharacteristic nature of uh, one of the opponents going on stage to congratulate a very fence rather. I don't know if that is best practice, and why the security looked on and didn't do anything about it. And another angle we could look at was Stoneboy right to privacy, kind of, to acknowledge his fans, supporters, and uh, what have you, a, a bridge. Yes, if you look at the video you just showed, after receiving the award, I think he was just about to speak, someone whispered to him, there was some commotion upcoming, and then he reacted. I might say uh, brandishing a gun in such a manner was very unfortunate. But who can blame him? If he felt threatened, why not? Because the gun is licensed. Um, but some of us who asked, um, why would you take a gun to an award ceremony? Uh, he suggested that Shatawale's actions were premeditated. Uh, the argument then also is that was his action also not premeditated to have gone to an event with a gun? That was my earlier uh, question I raised. What was the security protocols in place? Given what we've been talking about, why would the security even allow him to bring the gun to an event of that nature? And I also read something on Shatawale's a page which I found very, very worrying when he referred to Stoneboy as a, an arrogant cripple. I think statements like this should not come from somebody who falls on endorsement of products in this country and profit from sin. If it was a proper functioning democracy and elsewhere, many of the companies that endorse Shatawari would have been pulling up because this is an attack on the disabled. And I think that it is very unfortunate comment to be coming from somebody like Shatawali. And you see, there's a growing trend. These are role models for our youth. And I ask myself, if in this, this is what the youth of today are looking up to, then what future lies for this country? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kutin. Be before we just go ahead to what the police must do, um, in the last five to ten years, we've seen a growing incidence of, you know, musicians growing uh, their support base, especially in the dance hall uh, area. We we've seen uh, BIM Nation, we've seen uh, Sarkodia, we've seen Shatawal. They have such huge following. And it appears that these followings are gradually, you know, rising to become that of vigilantism. I mean, we talk about vigilantism in the country. And, you know, you see what happened yesterday. Should we begin to get worried, especially in the music area? Yes. If you look at elsewhere, where gangsterism in music has been one of the challenges for especially black Americans and other black people from other heritage in the West, I don't think that it is good for us to allow it to fist here. We copy blindly, and I'm just wondering why the youth are also chattering that cause. They are very beautiful musicians and very beautiful music, but unfortunately, the media are not also uh, 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 kind of happy with that kind of music. The media likes sensational reportage, and that is why 
this trend is growing and you see this divisiveness and if you like the gangsterism in the music industry in Ghana today. It's, it's gone beyond just mere supporters. It, it's become very vindictive when you look at, especially, um, you know, Stoneboy and, and Shatawale. We've heard today that the police service has invited both musicians. At least we can confirm that of Shatawale. Is this the way to go? What should we do from here? Yes. Like I always say, nobody is above the law. And I think that the police should at least this time prove to everybody that they are within their mandate to enforce the law. And if indeed Shatawali or Stoneboy broke the law, they should allow them to be uh, uh, to be dealt with within the confines of the law. So that to serve as some sort of uh, uh, example uh, to our youth. Because if we allow this to go, it will become a subculture within our youth. And if you are not lucky, we may be having another uh, 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 vigilante uh, groups in gestation in the music industry, and that does not augur well for us at all as a country. Thanks very much, uh, Imano Kutin, for your time. We appreciate your time uh, and for joining us uh, on this matter.